let's move on to a different, um, a little bit more on the cricketing side. We have spoken a lot about um, the mind and the psychology, the mindset, the inner journey. Let's talk about uh, cricket, but still in the through the lens of those non-cognitive skills. I'm going to talk about leadership at this point. Recently, you were uh, the, a very successful captain um, at, the, at your franchise team, the Multan Sultan in the Pakistan Super League. For those of you who are unaware what PSL or Pakistan Super League is, think of it as the English Premier League EPL for Pakistan, but in cricket. <laughs> you know, that's like the analogy that I can give you. Um, so Sean was the captain of a very successful um, franchise for PSL. Um, unfortunately, the tournament couldn't uh, end due to COVID-19, but by the end of when it got uh, canceled, all the teams had played equal amount of games and your team, Sean, were the table toppers. You guys had won the most n number of games um, and you were the captain. And that too, I think it was the first time you were captaining a side in, uh, in PSL, correct me if I'm wrong? In PSL, yes. Right, yeah. Uh, so how, one, how was that experience? And what I actually really want to get uh, understand is, you know, how did that inner journey that you took by devoting yourself and exercising and working out your brain through books, through those podcasts, through those journaling that you spoke about, how did those things help you become a good leader? Um, I think good or bad, the leader is always under the spotlight. And <laughs> yes. uh, a, lot of, a lot of things behind the scenes, they, they get ignored. I think there's a lot of work put in behind the scenes. The way Multan ran the cricketing setup, they invested in in uh, data analytics. The owners are passionate about cricket, and it just helps when um, when you also have owners that are that are good mentors, um, and they instill something that they made a decision that I wouldn't call a normal decision. You wouldn't expect other franchises if I if I ask you to. To, to put me at the helm, to make me captain. They saw something and they backed their vision. So I think it all starts from there. Um, then we had a great set of, of, of a management team. Uh, we are led by Andy Flower, uh, one of the most successful coaches in international cricket, one of the most successful players in international cricket. Yeah. Um, and then we had a really good sort of uh, mix of, of uh, experience and youth. And uh, I think what I tried to do from myself was I wanted to be open to open as much as possible to anyone and everyone over there. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously you need a filter at the end of the day as well. And you need to trust your own gut and instincts. But there were times that um, I did not know what to do, but I was uh, lucky to, to have so many great resources at my disposal. So many great opinions at my disposal, mm. um, but sometimes you might have all the resources. But if you're not, if you're not open to those resources, if you don't know how to use them, um, then you struggle as well. So I think my thing was to be as honest and as open as possible. Uh, captaincy is not easy uh, because captaincy is just not on the field. On the field is the main bit. You have to make. Yeah. It's a lot of decision making at the end of the day. So. And then when you're a batsman and you're a captain at the same time, it's just, it's, uh, it, I won't say it's a, it's a bad thing, but it's just making too many decisions in, 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 in a matter of split seconds. And then once you go off the field as well, you still have a lot of decisions to make, whether it's team meetings, whether it's uh, making the team, um, setting out different things. So like um, you're a representative of the players. So how would you like to do things logistically? Uh, different, different things. So um, it's, uh, it's uh, again, I'd say it's not an easy job, but I think everything at the end of the day made me realize that I have to make decisions. And in order to make decisions, I have to keep myself in the best possible frame of mind mentally. So I think these non-cognitive like skills uh, were... I think if, if, if I look at it, I just try to keep myself as uh, fresh and healthy as possible because there were just too many decisions that you have to make. And at the end of the day, uh, 
the good thing about Multan was that we collectively took ownership of all decisions. Mm. And where somebody felt strongly about something, we tried to back that particular person. Um, and there was no, there was no culture of senior or juniors. Everyone was welcome to put in their opinion. And mm. it was a culture of empowerment. And once you empower people, um, you give responsibility, especially to athletes. I think that's when you get their best reactions. So I think it's one of one of the most uh, greatest learning experiences I've had thus far. Uh, and I'd love to do it again. And I think that the culture we had, the kind of people we had, it was such a great environment to work under. And I hope that we get to do it again in the future. I'm sure. Hopefully things uh, normalize from the, this hope, the pandemic that we all are experiencing so that we can... Who knows what, what will happen with this uh, season of PSL, but hopefully whenever there is a next one, you guys uh, do really good. Um, John, like a great leader, you you know, with that particular answer, like, like how all great leaders should be, they give the team the entire credit of the success. And that's exactly what you have done in like a great role model.